Dobry wieczór wszystkim, I hope you're all doing fantastic today. I'm Mystical, and today I'll be letting you guys know about all the latest in AR and VR news. Quite a few exciting things have actually happened during the last two days, and as usual, you've got chapters down below to skip to any specific part of the video that you are most interested in. Now, without any further ado, let's jump right into the news. As usual, we're gonna begin with some meta news. I believe for a lot of people, this piece of news is actually even more confirmation that a Quest 3S will be coming pretty soon. As it seems meta might be trying to get rid of old stock of Quest 2s. They have reduced the price once again. And this time, not just in select countries, but everywhere. And in Walmart, the Quest 2 is actually now basically $150. From Upload VR, Meta has now officially cut down the price of the Quest 2 to just $200 for the 128 gigabyte model, the only model remaining. It comes just one month after the 256 gigabyte model went out of stock across the Meta store and retailers, and it remains unavailable. When bought from Walmart, the headset also comes with $50 Quest Store credit, effectively valuing it at just $150 if you plan to buy standalone games. The Quest 2 originally launched over three years ago at a price of $300 for the 64GB version and $400 for the 256GB version. Of course, that 64GB version was later on discontinued and instead replaced by the 128GB version, which was the same price. So now you can effectively get their cheapest model for just $200, or $150 if you plan to get standalone games and live near a Walmart. That is not a price that I expected. I mean, $150 for a standalone VR headset that is still really good, if you ask me. And it does actually push my mind as well towards the fact that I think Meta might be trying to get rid of old stock so that they can launch a new cheap device. But let me know your opinions down below, and if you guys are in the market for an older generation Quest 2, now might just be your time to buy. And even more good news, as if you're in the market for a newer device, a Quest 3 for example, the free Asgard's Wrath that actually came with the device got extended all the way until July. Meta extended the deal of all Quest 3 purchases coming with a free copy of Asgard's Wrath 2. The deal has been available since the Quest 3's launch, but was originally supposed to stop at the end of January. Meta has actually repeatedly extended this and has now extended it again until the end of June. 30th. Asgard's Wrath 2 is a 60 plus hour made for VR RPG with open world elements. It received widespread acclaim from critics, including a 10 out of 10 masterpiece rating from IGN. The game is also available on Quest 2 and Quest Pro, though owners of those headsets need to fork out $60 if they want to play it, making it the single most expensive title on the platform. So you are effectively still getting a $60 free title on the Quest 3 if you purchase until July. So that's pretty nice. AI at Meta on X has also tweeted about scene script. Let me tell you more. Today we're introducing SceneScript, a novel method for reconstructing environments and representing the layout of physical spaces from Reality Labs research. Details can be found in the link down below. SceneScript is able to directly infer a room's geometry using end-to-end -end machine learning and represent it using language. Compared to previous approaches, this results in representations of physical scenes that are compact, complete, interpretable, and extensible. From the video that they have posted here alongside this tweet, it seems that this is an incredibly powerful tool, allowing your quest to not just recognize planes, but now also recognize what those planes are. We can see it recognizing chairs, tables, countertops, beds, and so much more. Basically, allowing developers to even further augment your space, and this time do it incredibly accurately. It does seem to be very, very accurate in the video that they have posted, and I cannot wait to see how this expands. Of course, with Meta now focusing on AR, and most of their new headsets probably coming with augmented reality and colored augmented reality, this is of course a step they need to take in order to, you know, expand that space. What we have right now is good, but needs to be so much better for people to be able to use it in their daily lives. And I feel like this, allowing the headset to recognize things in your space is going to be very important to do that. Then in your game, you can say, oh, place objects randomly around the room, but only place them on these planes. Not only that, but it also allows for recognition of so many more things. It would know not to place a vase on the bed, for example. I agree with them saying it's a significant milestone. And again, I cannot wait to see 
see it implemented into our devices. Meta is now also helping new developers that are developing for the Quest with a multi-million dollar XR development fund. From Road to VR, Meta this week announced Oculus Publishing Ignition, a multi-million dollar fund aimed at newly formed XR studios. The company is offering money for VR and MR prototypes with the potential for follow-on funding to turn these prototypes into full titles. Seemingly wanting to tap into the unfortunate number of recently laid off game developers, Meta's new Oculus Publishing Ignition Fund is specifically looking for XR studios that were formed on or after April 2023. The company says it plans to fund up to 20 teams before the end of 2024. Those teams will receive three Quest 3 headsets and cash to build their ideas into prototypes over the course of six months. At the end of that sprint, there's also the potential for more funding to turn those prototypes into a fully scoped game. Meta is promising that participating studios will retain full IP, code, assets, design, and distribution rights. The fund has an eye towards specific types of content. We keep seeing news about people being laid off from game development studios and studios shutting down. And here is Meta actually trying to kind of counteract that. And of course, the more games we have, the better. People love complaining about the fact that we don't need better hardware. The hardware is actually here. We need the content. We're missing good games, good AAA long games. And this might finally be the chance for someone to create something. With Meta's funding, and let's be honest, they have a lot of it, hopefully these teams will be able to create something amazing. And even more teams in the future. WebXR is something I've been looking into quite a bit more recently, as it seems to be the perfect platform if you ask me to build a quote-unquote metaverse. It works on basically any device, whether it's your Quest, whether it's an Apple Vision Pro, whether it's a phone, you can basically run WebXR apps on it, meaning you should be able to join a quote-unquote metaverse from any device and that's the way I think it should be. It shouldn't be, you know, singular apps that you can only join from a certain device. No, everything should be able to access something like this. An interconnected 3D internet, essentially. And Apple is now adding support for Vision Pro's input system to WebXR. The web standard, which allows VR experiences to run right from a web browser. Yeah, you don't even need to install anything for WebXR to work. In case you guys didn't know, there's actually a version of Beat Saber with custom songs running in WebXR. One of the most unique things about the Apple Vision Pro is its input system, which eschews motion controllers in favor of a look and pinch system, which combines eye tracking with a pinch gesture. On a whole, it's a really useful way to navigate the headset, but because it works so differently than motion controllers, it doesn't play too well with WebXR. But Apple is working to fix that. This week, the company announced the latest version of Vision OS 1.1 includes a new input system for Safari's WebXR capabilities called the Transient Pointer. This new mode provides inputs for the headset in a standardized way, which developers can use to understand what users are selecting inside a WebXR session running on the Vision Pro. This is of course going to be quite important, as just as I mentioned, WebXR can run on most things, but if it's running on a VR headset, and a VR headset that doesn't have controllers, well you're going to have some issues. So it's very important for Apple to standardize their way of, you know, look and pinch to throw it into WebXR. And I'm very happy seeing that they're giving developers what they need in order to implement it here. Up to this point, WebXR apps typically expected a headset to report a continuously updated position of each controller, but Apple says it built Vision Pro's input system to reveal as little information about the user as possible, so it doesn't report the pose or position of the user's hands by default. Instead, it only reveals such information at a moment of the user's pinch, though it's possible for a WebXR app to ask for full hand tracking info. With the new transient pointer option, when a user pinches the WebXR app, will be able to see a ray representing the direction of the user's gaze and the coordinate position of their pinch, like in Vision OS itself. The app thus looks at the pinch to decide when a user is making an input, and looks at the ray to decide where they're making the input. Again, very happy to see Apple working on this, as I would love to see WebXR becoming more prevalent inside our devices. I want to see more devices using it, and I want to see more apps using it. How cool would it be if we didn't even need to install apps in the future? All these apps that we have right now could be run inside a web browser on any device. That honestly just sounds like the perfect universal Play Store, which is also why it probably won't happen. And finally, something that I've been mentioned in on X from Mauricio Garcia. So excited for this, mentioning my favorite sources for VR news as they might be interested. First of all, thank you so much. And second of all, board games are more than just a trend. They're a lifestyle. Imagine your tabletop favorites instantly coming to life right before your eyes 
thanks to spatial computing. That's the future we're building at the Game Kitchen. And it seems here that the Game Kitchen are actually building an MR version of our favorite tabletop games. I've been wanting to see tabletop titles inside AR for the longest time. I think it's really, really cool. And it's also, I guess, why I love Demio so much. I don't know. It's the feeling of being able to see the board game right there in front of you without it actually being there. There's just something really cool about that. And being able to collaborate with your friends, possibly in the same room or somewhere entirely different in a different country, perhaps, and see them there, again, floating next to you inside your house, playing on your table. There's just something magical about that. And that's why I think this is really, really cool. Either way, though, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you guys are in the world. If you guys like this one, please leave it a like. If you disliked it, I guess it works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and Reddit down below, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. I need to quickly get to editing this because I need to get to Bonarka so that myself and Emma can record that first Polish video for that channel. I'm going to try to translate it into uh, English as well with subtitles. So that might just be interesting. Thank you so, so much to all the patrons supporting this channel. You guys are what makes this possible. You guys are amazing. Seriously, thank you so, so much for your support and thank you to anyone else supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell. And see you again in the next video. Peace.